couple of weeks ago we came here to the steel plant to see the installation of the new North Charger Crane. At the time they were lifting the gigantic beams up into place onto the gantry and the trolleys that go with it that hold the uh, cables, that hold the ladle. We've come back now because those girders are now in place and we've really moved from the mechanical phase to the electrical phase. Uh, I'm joined today by Tom Badger, he's one of the lead electrical engineers on the project. Tom, thanks for bringing us up here, we're on top of the crane as we speak, it sometimes moves around. Yeah. Um, but tell us, since we came here last, what's been going on, what have you been doing here? So, since you came here last, we've, uh, we've fully installed all the, the six pieces, we've bolted them all together uh, and we've actually started to move a lot of these pieces uh, by powering the crane up over uh, a series of uh, phased introduction of power to the crane. Yeah, so we saw the big pieces come into place and I look around me and I can see so quite a bit of progress. Obviously they're being bolted together, as we've seen. We can also see some cabling uh, on, on the reels there. Yeah. And as you said, there is some power here. Now, now it's not just a case of plugging it into the mains, Tom. Tell us, firstly, how do you get power up to, because we're quite a long way up in the air, how do you get power to a place like this? So, on the bay, there's, uh, there's the high voltage 3.3 kV, we call them downshop rails. Uh, so the three lines uh, supply voltage to the crane via the carbon shoes. So the carbon shoes on the crane will travel up and down the bay uh, and they will they'll apply pressure to the rails then and, and the power is transmitted through those up to the transformer house which you'll see behind us over there. The transformer house then we um, transform the high voltage uh, electricity down to uh, low voltage and that's distributed around the crane then for the, uh, for the variable frequency drives, uh, the auxiliary power supplies, things like that, do the things that make the crane work. And when we came last time, we saw uh, inside one of the cabins, it's amazing, these, we've got huge rooms inside the cranes here, and there was lots of electrical panelling and detailed electrical work. So some of the electrical work had been done before the pieces were lifted, but, but, but then you have to connect all those things together and connect the different parts of the crane together. How complex is that, Tom? Um, pretty complex. So once the, the main parts are cabled up on the floor as part of our pre-assembly process, like you said, as when we lift it up onto the gantry and actually bolt all the pieces together, we run then hundreds of cables from boom to boom and from boom to trolley. Um, and that then transmits the power around around the crane and also you know, the networks for the control systems. Uh, so that, there's a complex uh, system of networks around the crane which we've got our, kind of, uh, our crane's main control system, our safety control system, things like that. Yeah, and I guess uh, people might expect there to be power to drive the crane up and down the bay and to drive the, the reels and the cables and so forth, but as you explained, there's, we've been into the cabin there and there's a lot of electrical infrastructure there. But you were also telling me earlier about the safety systems that are in place for the crane. Now, people might not realise that that's electronically controlled. Tell us a bit about those. So one of the challenges uh, we've got installing a new crane uh, is, is the increased statutory uh, requirements of the crane. So, for example, uh, one of the main safety features we've introduced are the dead man's handles for the controllers. So, similar to on a train where you've got to hold your hand or hold your foot on a train, or hold your hand on, uh, on the joystick for the entirety of the movement, as soon as you remove your hand, the crane comes to a stop. Um, we've also introduced things like safety limit switches. So, for example, on the hoist, we've got the hoist actually raising. We've got a slow down limit when it starts to get close to the underside of the booms. We've got a stop limit when it starts to get really close. So, uh, so there's no risk of uh, dropping a load, of breaking the cable, um, or you know, causing any kind of hazard to uh, anything below. And we've also got uh, kind of cross travel and long travel limits. Very much a similar kind of uh, theory, where you, as you cross travel, you've got a slow down and a stop before you hit the mechanical buffers. Uh, and we've got the couple kind of safety gates into lock for that as well. Yeah. So you can only actually access the crane when the crane's in a safe position. Yeah, and we, we know this is a north charger crane, but by default there's a south charger crane as well. And you were saying there's another system which prevents the two going into each other because they've both got full bay length travel effectively, have they? That's right, yeah. So we will be installing an anti-collision system. So our anti-collision system uh, will alert uh, the north crane and the south crane when they get too close to each other. And then when they get within a certain distance, it will actually cause the crane to slow down and stop. 
So we've been on the crane uh, this afternoon and, and felt it moving a, bit, a little bit, uh, a few metres. So you're currently in commissioning, yeah. but what work is there now to do before this crane becomes operational and you can put the, the old North Charger crane out of service? So there's quite a bit of work left. Um, we're gearing up now towards our load test. So tomorrow and in the next couple of days we'll be putting on the main hooks of the crane. Once the hooks are on, um, we're then in a position to actually load test the crane. So we load test the crane to 125% of its safe working load. So for a 500 tonne crane, that's 625 tonne. That's a static test. We raise that up, we wait, we measure the deflection of the actual girder. So we do expect the girder to droop a little bit. We'll uh, measure the deflection, put the load back down. When that girder goes back to its natural position, it's a pass. Um, we'll then do dynamic tests, so at 100% of the safe working load, so we'll pick up 500 tonne, we'll travel down the bay, we'll travel uh, east and west, north and south, up and down, and we'll record the speeds. Uh, and that's part of our performance, guarantee, performance guarantees of the crane. Uh, so we have, we'd expect the crane to meet certain speeds, um, and we expect the crane to lift a certain amount of weight. So it is an incredible project that continues because, as I said, we've moved from the mechanical to the electrical phase, which is the bit that actually makes this thing work. And when you're up here, you know, the size of it is gargantuan. And when Tom mentions about, I know 600 tons is a lot, but when he talks about these beams having some sort of degree of flex in them, it is quite extraordinary. There's plenty of work still to do, and we'll certainly come back to see the crane in operation. Love to see it in operation. Of course, after that, there's the whole decommissioning of the old crane, and there's another story in itself. So, hey Tom, uh, you know, congratulations for getting this far and all the guys working on it because, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're up and running, sort of. Uh, look forward to, to the coming weeks to see how you get on, but uh, we'll certainly be back.